Welcome back to Cheddar News. A norovirus outbreak earlier this month in Colorado caused an entire school district to shut down for a week. Nearly a year ago, a similar outbreak of the infectious disease caused Royal Caribbean's Oasis of the Seas to quarantine. But what exactly is a norovirus? Dr. Jen Cottle is a family physician and an associate professor at Rowan University here to talk all about this 24-hour flu. Dr. Jen, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Hannah. It's good to, good to chat with you. Always great to see you. So let's talk about this. Did the Colorado School District do the right thing by shutting down the school for more than a week? What was the process that led them down this path? Yeah, so, you know, from, from what I've read and what I've seen in the news, I think they made the right call. Now, of course, uh, there were a lot of people likely involved in making that call, not just the school district and educators, et cetera, but probably the public health department and other organizations. But this is the thing. Norovirus is a very, very, very contagious virus. It is a virus that causes this sort of gastroenteritis like we've been seeing in the school district, vomiting, diarrhea at times, fever, feeling very unwell. So it's so contagious that, yes, I think they probably <laughs> made the right move. So on that note, how does this spread and how can we prevent it from spreading? Yeah, so this is a virus that, you know, I don't know if you've heard uh, of the cruise ship virus. Kind of, I don't know if you've been on cruises before, but like every now and then we hear of cruise ships coming down with a gastroenteritis. This is the bug that we often see making people sick on cruise ships when people on cruise ships get vomiting, diarrhea, et cetera. But we also see this virus in healthcare settings. We see it in schools, daycares, et cetera, um, places where there are a lot of people and it can travel very fast. So the thing about it is, um, you know, unfortunately, when it kind of gets hold, it becomes very difficult to control unless we're doing certain things. We're avoiding uh, people who are ill. We're not touching surfaces uh, that are contaminated with the virus. We need to make sure that we're not eating food or drinking water that's contaminated with it as well. And I think one of the biggest things in terms of decontamination, and this is actually one of the things the school system in their reports has said they've been doing, is literally using bleach solutions and, and sort of literally scrubbing down their schools and uh, and their um, their you know centers of learning, which is very important for decontamination. Dr. Jen, is the norovirus life threatening in any way? That's a really great question. I think most people, in fact, I know most people who get norovirus um, get over it and do okay. Uh, remember, it, it may cause 24, 36 uh, hours, or maybe a little bit longer, two or three days of uh, feeling pretty ill. The norovirus can come on suddenly, at least the symptoms can. So you may not even feel queasy and need to all of a sudden vomit. Um, so it can be pretty severe and abrupt. Uh, but usually people who are otherwise healthy, et cetera, will resolve and it, it will resolve and they'll, they'll get better and move on. Now, keep in mind, there are people who are at higher risk for having complications. Those would be young children, babies, right? Uh, those would be people with underlying uh, uh, health conditions, weakened immune systems. And remember, anytime we have vomiting, diarrhea, et cetera, we're losing fluids. So there's always that risk of dehydration, which, of course, can be worse with certain people with, um, with underlying medical conditions. So, Dr. Jen, our producer Henry shared a story that really put this into perspective for me, and I hope you can explain it. Apparently, his entire school got the norovirus when he was in high school, However, including him. His sister, though, got out scot-free without getting sick, even though she was around the same bug at the same school, obviously lived with her brother who had the norovirus. Is there a reason it affects some people and not others? Well, that's a great question. And Henry told me the same story as we were getting ready to come on this broadcast, too. And I sympathized with him uh, because he did have norovirus. And he said it was pretty severe. Uh, but in terms of his sister and why his sister didn't get ill, you know, that's a great question. You know, we could ask the same question with things like the flu, right? A whole household, the kids, uh, you know, parents, everybody gets sick with the flu, but there's one person in the household that doesn't get it. Sometimes it's difficult to explain and actually pinpoint uh, why this is the case may have something to do with their immune system. It may and likely has something to do with the type of contact that they've had and things like that. Um, this brings me back, though, Hannah, if I might, to one of the biggest precautions that we should and can be taking, which is hand washing, I should say. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. It's not just good for influenza, but it's good for bugs like norovirus and things like that. So can I explain exactly why she didn't get sick? No, but um, some things that will hopefully keep people from getting sick are hand washing, staying away from those who are ill, you know, not drinking and eating contaminated food, water, and things of that nature. Great advice as usual. Dr. Jen, thanks so much for being on and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Thank you.